Hello and welcome to the Alaska State Archives Exxon Valdez Litigation Documents Project Summary. My name is Sarah Bornstein and I am the Project Archivist. On March 24, 1989, the Exxon Valdez, an oil tanker bound for Long Beach, California, struck Prince William Sound's Bly Reef and spilled hundreds of thousands of barrels of crude oil into Alaskan waters. Before this disaster happened, the sentiment was that there couldn't possibly be enough oil spilled in this sound to create a problem. However, the map on this page shows that three months later the oil continued to move down the coastline and the photographs give proof that there was quite the disaster. The oil spill left the surrounding communities asking many questions, including who is responsible? Who would clean this up? How would it be cleaned up? Who should pay for it? Would fishermen and cannery workers be compensated for the lost season? And what would happen to the wildlife affected by the oil? It was clear from the reports, depositions, and other documents in the files that these were the central questions of the litigation case. The spill caused five years of litigation, produced about 8 million pages of a case file, and the Alaska State Archives received 3,528 boxes of litigation papers. The first part of this project consisted of getting the grant from NHPRC and then hiring a project archivist, which is me, and then gathering together an oversight task force. The oversight task force was put together to review project activities and advise the archivist on legal issues, science and technology of the spill and cleanup, regional concerns, and public information. The people in the task force have all been involved with the spill at various points. You may now pause the slideshow to look at the task force members' descriptions. The second part of the project was the appraisal part determining which boxes to keep and which to dispose. Just about the same time as I started the Exxon project, the litigation case was reopened. As we all know, no project goes exactly as planned. Thus, a clause in the litigation said that if more money was needed to finish the cleanup, the case would be reopened. However, the, for the archives, this means that nothing can be disposed while there is the possibility it may be needed by the lawyers. Therefore, the material we have decided does not have archival value or does not fall under the mission statement of the State Archives will be set aside for disposal or transferred back to the Department of Law when the reopener is finished. Now, while we are not disposing, we did have to come up with criteria for material that would be disposed later. The first criteria was is the material duplicate. In the court case, you have two sides which are both finding evidence and then they have to show each other their evidence and then they photocopy each other's papers and the state archives ended up with both sides' papers. So we had not only duplicates but triplicates, quadruplicates, and it doesn't make any sense to keep more than one or two copies and especially if you have the original you don't need several copies of it. So we were looking for the original documents and then determining which were the duplicates. And we don't need to keep those. The second, do we have a longer lasting, more stable copy of the material, such as microfilm? Microfilm lasts much longer than paper material. At the beginning of this process of copying each other's information, some of the stuff was microfilmed and later they moved to hard copies. So we had to determine if the material had been microfilmed, did we have the microfilm copies, and if we did, we would keep those rather than any paper copies of the material. The third criteria was determining whether the material is restricted indefinitely 
or whether there will be public access to it later. If the material is restricted from public access by the courts, then there is no point in the archives keeping it because it will never be used. Now, because 3,528 boxes is overwhelming, I found a logical way to divide the boxes into smaller groups to make the process more manageable. When the boxes were originally transferred to the archives, they were transferred in groups by types of files. This made the job easier because some types of files had obviously obvious archival value and some did not. For example, depositions are the transcripts of interviews of people ranging from the captain and crew of the Exxon Valdez tanker vessel to local business owners and the fishermen whose season's wages were affected by the spill. Therefore, the 163 boxes of depositions were marked for keeping. Also, the working notebooks, which are the notebooks spill workers were writing their observations in as they stood on the beach, have archival values, so those 31 boxes were marked for keeping. On the other hand, blowbacks are copies of material with sensitive information blacked out. So not only are the documents duplicates, but, do they, but they do not contain the original full information. These six boxes were marked for eventual disposal. The state NRDA public release photocopies are copies of pub publications that are available at multiple libraries. If it is available elsewhere, the archives does not need to keep the copies. Some of the larger groups of boxes I was able to break into smaller subcategories. For example, the 2,637 state production files. This group contains several boxes of microfilm. As discussed in the last slide, microfilm lasts much longer than paper, so the boxes will be retained. Boxes of photocopies or duplicates will not be retained. Part of the state production includes 516 boxes of original material from agencies that have since closed, and therefore the information the documents contain may not be represented elsewhere. The goal of the grant is to keep 15% of the Exxon material. While you can see we are slightly over that at 24%, we not only are close, but 516 boxes of the 844 are the original state agency material, which is technically not litigation papers, but important to retain. Therefore, if we remove that from the percentage, we are below the 15% marker. The third part of the project was arrangement and description. This is where we had to decide what the boxes actually contain and then create a digital record for every single box. So what did I find in the boxes? I found field notebooks, which are the hands-on records of spill survey and remediation. I found boxes filled with folders of papers. I found audio and video microcassettes. The pen is there for size. I found boxes filled with microfilm reels. And I found boxes filled with evidence envelopes. This box happened to be filled with VHS tapes. While many of the boxes contain just boxes full of papers, I found one box on which each stack of paper had a little note written at the bottom. And I learned that one can find entertainment even in the dull task of Xeroxing documents. So I want to thank this man, Rich, for his very entertaining little notes, such as copied by Rich, copied with enthusiasm by Rich, copied not once, but twice by Rich, copied by Rich with promise and anticipation, but commanded by the hand of the inevitable. You may now pause the slide to keep reading. Manices is the in-house database of the state archives. After creating a Word document log of the material in all the boxes we had determined the archives will retain, I transferred the information to the database, creating a record for every single box. This image is an image of what the records look like. They contain a physical description, numbers pertaining to the box, a scope note which describes what's in the box. For example, this box contains daily reports from both Exxon and ADEC 
in shoreline cleanup assessments. There's an access restrictions note telling whether the box is restricted from access and a note stating where the material originally came from. In this instance, it's the Department of Environmental Conservation. So what's left? Now the boxes, since they have been moved from place to place, need physical care. Some information needs reboxing where the boxes have torn, and refoldering needs to be done because much of the information is in hanging folders, and the metal needs to be taken out, and archival folders need to be put in place. We need to work with our task force to address restrictions and public information and affairs issues. There's still records in Anchorage in the custody of the Department of Law, and we need to discuss which boxes will be given to the State Archives when the Department of Law is done with them. We're working on publicizing the project, and eventually we will have a library catalog entry in the Capital City Library Catalog and WorldCat so that people will be able to find the project at the State Archives. If you have any questions, you can contact the project director, Larry Hipschman, myself, you can contact the State Archives, or you can visit the project webpage, which gives much information. And I will leave you with the fa my favorite page that I found in the litigation documents thoughts to get you through almost any crisis. <laughs>